Hey guys, Nish Quick here. So I've been busy with a lot of stuff, but I just wanted to get this video out and ready because we're about three weeks out from my most anticipated RPG of 2024, and that is the awesome, the stylish fantasy RPG, Metaphor Re-Fantasio. And there's some interesting discussions going on regarding this game online, and I wanted to throw my hat into this ring as well, and I just want to let you guys know, if this game is not in your radar, don't sleep on it. This is going to be a pretty big hit of this year. I can just kind of feel it. I can feel it in my bones, and I wanted to talk to you guys specifically on why you should not miss out and you should not be sleeping on Metaphor re Fantasio. And if you guys are excited for Metaphor, if you are looking forward to the future of RPGs and of Atlas, remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on Nintendo and JRPGs just like this. And while you're at it, if you want some videos early and you even want to suggest some content for me to make that you specifically want to see, Consider joining as a Nishquick Pops channel member down below. Ever since June 2023, heck, even before that, when I was hearing rumblings of Project Re-Fantasy, I was always on board with this game, all the way back. We were getting videos of uh, this random knight eating chicken and these very strange live-action trailers hinting at what Project Re-Fantasy is going to be. I was always so curious, what is Atlas's take on a fantasy RPG going to be like? And I was always waiting so patiently, so eagerly to see Project Re Fantasy. And when we saw it in the Xbox showcase last year, which was crazy to begin with, like what the heck, an Xbox showcase? First of all, I was absolutely blown away by the way the game looked, the way the game sounded, just the vibe, the aesthetic, just the look and feel of this game was nothing like I've ever seen Atlas do before. I was also very surprised to see that a lot of people weren't on board with this. I kept hearing the sentiment, oh, it's just fantasy persona, and I still hear that today. I hear so many people say it's just fantasy persona. And a big part of this video is I want to kind of dispel those claims and say that Metaphor is anything but just fantasy persona. It is taking some elements of persona and putting it in a high fantasy setting and aesthetic, but it's doing so much more than setting it apart from the Persona series and the Shin Megami Tensei series. And I will admit, when I first saw that trailer in June of 2023, I was a little taken aback when I saw the turn-based combat, when I saw the menus, when I saw some of the bonding systems. I was like, hey, this is a little more Persona than I thought it would be. But then I gave it the benefit of the doubt. I was like, let's see a bit more. And now that we've seen so much more, there is a lot that this game is doing drastically different from Persona, SMT, and any other fantasy RPG. So first of all, I want to talk about the archetype system, because that was one thing that I was very blown away with. I think we got a showcase in around March or April, and that showed us the full extent of what these archetypes were, and then we got some more info at Summer Games Fest. And initially, I thought that each character is going to have their own archetype, and that'll be it. It'll just be like their persona. It'll be like the persona that they summon. I did not expect this to turn into sort of like a RPG job system. And I see a lot of people compare this to Xenoblade Chronicles 3's hero system, which makes me very happy because of course it's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And I really loved experimenting with the hero system. It kept the game really fresh and really exciting at every single chapter, every single hour that I played the game. I was constantly so swapping classes, swapping heroes in and out, and it was really cool because of the party composition that I had. Which classes am I going to have in my party at this time and how can I mix and match that? And I'm very excited to do that in Metaphor because whenever I go into different dungeons, I want to play around with different party dynamics and I don't want things to feel the same. And I love this idea of carrying over skills traits, 
attacks and things like that over to other archetypes so you can maximize your potential in different ways within this game and in different scenarios that you find yourself in. It seems like the daily life and the calendar system will be very different from Persona as well. I remember Katsura Hashino, the director of the game, saying that Persona was like you living an entire school year. Metaphor, on the other hand, is like you're actually going on a journey and with this you're going to be building your campaign, building your cause to be the next king of the kingdom of Yurkonia. And on top of that, you're going to be visiting so many different kingdoms, visiting so many different tribes and nations and countries and so on and so forth. And I think utilizing this calendar system to plan out your adventure, plan out your campaign, and plan out your journey to influence other people within this kingdom is a very unique and very interesting idea that they have going for them. And of course, another thing that sets it apart from Persona and SMT and anything else that Atlas has done is the combat. Like I said before, the combat was initially very similar with the user interfaces and the turn-based style and the use of your monsters that you're summoning, which were your archetypes. But now with the job system and this whole vast archetype system where you can mix and match different archetypes with different party members, and also this very unique style of combat, which is the fast and the squad squad styles. I think that's so unique. We've seen it in other games like Trails Through Daybreak, but adding this archetype and job system on top of that mix between action and turn-based is very interesting. And I love that whichever archetype you have equipped on your main character is the archetype that you will use in your fast action combat in the overworld and which will seamlessly transition over into the turn-based combat as well. A lot of this stuff is very similar to Persona and SM Notice that I use similar. It's not the same. It's not copying Persona and SMT. It's very similar, but it's using its own unique twist on things. Like, instead of Personas, you have a vast array of different archetypes that you can play around with. Instead of a traditional calendar system in a regular school year in the life of a student, you're planning out your adventure and you're planning out your campaign to become the next king. And instead of just normal preemptive attacks and ambushes like we see in games like Persona 5, you now have two different unique styles of combat which you can interact with, and you're your archetypes have a very big role to play in that as well. These three things are enough to set Metaphor Re Fantasio apart from any other RPG that I've seen and make it really unique and just a very enticing gameplay experience. But I would argue that the thing that probably captivates me the most about Metaphor Re Fantasio is its story. And honestly, I haven't been delving too much into the story because Atlas is revealing so, so, so much about this and I don't want to get spoiled too much about any of the characters and the story details or anything, but basically the gist of what I know is you're in a fantasy world, you are on the journey to become the next king in this royal tournament for the throne. And on top of that, there's some really interesting fourth wall breaking elements going on here, where there's a book that our main character has, and in this book you see a utopia that resembles our reality. So there's that desire for people in the world of metaphor to build their world to become sort of like ours. And that's a very interesting and thought provoking concept, which I can see making us think for hours and hours upon end about what these themes and what these messages are that the game is trying to tell us. One other cool thing that I've noticed about Metaphor is it utilizes the concepts of psychology and specifically Carl Jung's psychoanalysis concepts that Persona uses as well. So like the shadow, the Persona, other concepts and thematic elements that we see in other Mega Ten games like Persona and SMT, but it's doing it and representing it in a very different way. You see, as I was researching about like other psychological concepts in RPGs and specifically Xenogears after I beat Xenogears, I noticed that Carl Jung has a lot of studies and a lot of writings relating to archetypes 
relating specifically to archetypes. And I love how metaphor is expanding on that concept because in the end, I've noticed that archetypes are sort of what the Persona and SMT series sort of revolves around itself. And I'm really interested to see how these archetypes play into the story, play into the themes, play into the messages that Hashino and the team are trying to tell with the story within metaphor. And since they're really obsessed with using the psychoanalysis theories and concepts, I am very curious and excited to see how they expand and use these in a very different and unique way within Metaphor Fantasio. And since we're talking about the story, I want to express my love and excitement for this setting, this world, and overall the aesthetic that they're expressing with Metaphor Fantasio. I gravitate usually a little more to fantasy aesthetics, and especially fantasy aesthetics that are not very traditional high fantasy aesthetics. So something like Xenoblade always really appealed to me because of that sci-fi edge it had to it. And even something like Tales of Arise that had a little bit of that sci-fi edge to it as well. Metaphor has no sci-fi, but it's not your traditional high fantasy. It's not even like a traditional Final Fantasy or a Dragon Quest. It has this very unique kind of gritty look to it. And on top of that, like I said before, this isn't taking place in a realistic setting. No high school, no real people, we have humans but they look like this. But anyways, this isn't like any other Mega Ten game and Mega Ten setting we've experienced and not even anything like Atlas has done, barring maybe the Etrian Odyssey series, but that's a whole different kind of fantasy aesthetic than what Metaphor is going for. I love how Metaphor is having a little bit of that gritty look to it, but it's involving some aspects of our reality, like 1960s and 70s fashion and aesthetics for some of the character designs, but still retaining a very unique and one-of-a-kind look and aesthetic. And I love this quote here from Shigenori Soijima, the character designer, where he talks about replicating character designs in other fantasy media that he's seen. He says here, I had a lot of fun doing it, but I was coming up with something that was kind of an imitation of styles I had seen. I was thinking, well, what can I bring to the fantasy genre? How can I add to it and use my own style to bring my own riff onto it? That was part of what helped inform my character design for Metaphor. Whenever you see Metaphor's characters like the protagonist, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Heisme, you can tell that they're designed by the same character designer who made characters like Ryuji, An, Yusuke, Chie, Yukiko, etc. But I love how Sojima is using aspects and elements from real world fashion, other fantasy media and fantasy genres, and even other like modern contemporary art to create a world and create characters that really embody a truly unique and innovative fantasy world. I just love that not only in its aesthetic, Metaphor is setting itself apart from Persona and SMT, but other fantasy games, other fantasy RPGs, and other fantasy media in general, and I'm very excited to just delve into this world and dissect all there is to the lore, the story, the world, the characters, the locations, so much. And speaking of the aesthetics and the visuals, I want to talk about the UI real quick, because when I saw that first trailer in June of 2023, the UI immediately stuck out to me. Of course, that menu which had that Persona 5 aesthetic, and immediately after seeing the Persona 3 Reload trailer around that same week, I was sort of questioning, I was like, why is Atlas banking so much on the Persona 5 look and aesthetic? And I think that's just their Atlas vibe now. I think that's what they're going for. That's their Atlas vibe. That sort of striking and visually impactful UI. User interface is very important in many JRPGs and I think Metaphor has nailed it with their menus, interactions, and so many things that you're just seeing all the time when you're in battle, when you're customizing your characters, when you're customizing your archetypes, it's very, very intrinsic to that world and that aesthetic that Metaphor is building for itself. And of course, this UI and this visual language that Metaphor is building is really separate from Persona in any single way. Of course, Persona 5 has its own striking user interfaces and Persona 3 Reload does as well, but Metaphor has a little bit of that gritty 
grit to it, like I said before. And it's got very bold and thick serif fonts. And those splashes of paint that you see whenever you're moving your cursor around and selecting different menu options. It has a very unique look and feel to it. And I always am using this word in this video today. It's grit. It's got like the pristine fantasy look to it, but it's got a little bit of that grit as well. And I really love this aesthetic that the designers are going for. Atlas pays extra attention to the user interfaces and how our experience is elevated from the stylishness, the interaction, the animations, and how concise, clean, and easy to navigate they are as well. I want to read this quote from the UI artist Koji Issei who said, We thought about how the character's emotions would affect or inform the user interface. We were really diligent in thinking about where people's eyes would go on screen and what they'll be looking for. For example, if you select one option, it will pull up information from another in a natural way to keep the flow of information relevant and easy to follow. We want to make sure people don't lose concentration when they're mucking around with the UI. We make sure that you're naturally following the flow of UI in a very efficient way. Persona 5, Persona 3 Reload, Persona 5 Strikers, Tactica, all these games did that very well. But I love how Koji Issei says that he thought about how the character's emotions would affect or inform the UI. And I feel like that's really going to enhance the combat and the gameplay experience of Metaphor Fantasio. And so many of these small little changes and elements really really set it apart as a one-of-a-kind fantasy RPG and set it apart in Atlas's massive catalog of amazing games as well. Hey guys, so before we continue, I just wanted to say that a lot of the information and the quotes I'm using for this video come from this Medium article written by Brian Shea, formerly of Game Informer. So this was actually supposed to be the big Game Informer cover story for October when Metaphor was going to be releasing. But unfortunately, because of the untimely and unfortunate closure of Game Informer, that didn't come to be. But luckily, Brian Shea was able to publish this on his Medium account. So definitely go and give this a read. Go support him. And it's a great coverage of the opening hours of Metaphor. And it has some amazing developer interviews as well. So definitely check this out. It'll get you even more hype for this awesome RPG coming very soon. The final reason why I think you guys should not be sleeping on Metaphor Refantasio and why I'm frankly super, super excited for it is because it is a very unique and innovative and one of a kind new IP. And in this day and age of video games full of remakes, remasters, sequels, reused IPs, reused characters, and just most of the times very safe games and games and new releases that oftentimes don't take many risks. In this day and age, I'm very, very happy to see a game like Metaphor Refantasio utilizing lessons and mechanics and concepts that work from prior games, but remixing them, trying new things, and creating a new concept and a new IP from the ground up. It just feels great, it feels refreshing, and it feels revitalizing as a fan of video games and a fan of JRPGs. And not to mention, this game is shaping up to be one of Atlas's best. As I continue to see more and more of this game, I realize that this is shaping up to possibly be one of Atlas's magnum opus games. I don't usually hype myself up too much with games. I like to temper my expectations because sometimes it can either surpass my expectations, meet my expectations, or sometimes even not even meet my expectations. So I want to temper my expectations with metaphor, but it seems like they're taking a lot of the best concepts from prior Atlas games and just utilizing things that work. And on top of that, introducing new mechanics, new innovative concepts, new innovative themes and story elements to create a one of a kind Atlas masterpiece. And on top of that, it is helmed by three greats and three legends within Atlas. That's Katsuro Hashino, who is responsible for three of the most popular Persona games and what put Atlas and Persona on the map with Persona 3, 
4 and 5. Shigenori Soijima, who's been responsible for bringing so many Atlas and so many Persona characters to life. And Shoji Meguro, whose music that we've been bopping to for many, many, many years, from whose work we've been hearing from the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona series. The fact that these three amazing legendary RPG veterans have taken all that they've learned from prior masterpieces and prior entries and adding it all into metaphor, adding some new innovative novel elements, and on top of that, just creating something new, a new IP, that's enough to get me very excited, and that's enough to get you excited for metaphor, so let me know in the comments below. Are you excited for metaphor? Are you sleeping on this game? Does this game not interest you? And if it's just something like a fantasy persona to you, if it's as simple as that, let me know in the comments below why you feel that way and why you may not be excited. And of course, if you are excited, please also hype with me in the comments below. I'm really excited for Metaphor Re Fantasio. I might stream a bit of it when it comes out. And if there's a lot more to talk about following the game, I'll definitely do more videos on it as well. I might bring some of my friends on for another EXP podcast episode once we get our hands on the game and play some more of it once it releases. Remember to give this video a like and subscribe for more Nintendo and JRPG content like this. This is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like any Atlas game to get ready for the masterpiece that will be Metaphor Re Fantasio. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.